January 26th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Genesis chapter 46 from the Old Testament. So Israel began his journey, taking with him all that he had. When he came to Beersheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. God spoke to Israel in a vision during the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. He replied, Here I am. He said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I will make you into a great nation there. I will go down with you to Egypt, and I myself will certainly bring you back from there. Joseph will close your eyes. Then Jacob started out from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel carried their father Jacob, their little children, and their wives in the wagons that Pharaoh had sent along to transport him. Jacob and all his descendants took their livestock and the possessions they had acquired in the land of Canaan, and they went to Egypt. He brought with him to Egypt his sons and grandsons, his daughters and granddaughters, all his descendants. These are the names of the sons of Israel who went to Egypt, Jacob and his sons Reuben, the firstborn of Jacob, the sons of Reuben, Hanok, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi, the sons of Simeon, Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jachin, Zohar, and Shal, the son of a Canaanite woman. The sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The sons of Judah, Er, Onan, Shelah, Perez, and Zerah. But Er and Onan died in the land of Canaan. The sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamel. The sons of Issachar, Tola, Pua, Jashub, and Shimron. The sons of Zebulun, Sered, Elon, and Jaliel. These were the sons of Leah, whom she bore to Jacob and paid him Aram, along with Dinah his daughter. His sons and daughters numbered thirty-three in all. The sons of Gad, Zephon, Hagi, Shuni, Ezbon, Erai, Erodai, and Arilai. The sons of Asher, Imna, Ishva, Ishvi, Berai, and Sira, their sister. The sons of Beriah were Heber and Malkiel. These were the sons of Zilpah, whom Laban gave to Leah his daughter. She bore these to Jacob, sixteen in all. The sons of Rachel, the wife of Jacob, Joseph and Benjamin. Manasseh and Ephraim were born to Joseph in the land of Egypt. Azanath, daughter of Potipharah, priest of On, bore them to him. The sons of Benjamin, Bela, Beaker, Ashbel, Gira, Naaman, Ehi, Rosh, Mupim, Huppim, and Ard. These were the sons of Rachel who were born to Jacob, fourteen in all. The son of Dan, Hushim, the sons of Naphtali, Jaziel, Gaiunai, Gezer, and Shillam. These were the sons of Bilha, whom Laban gave to Rachel his daughter. She bore these to Jacob, seven in all. All the direct descendants of Jacob who went to Egypt with him were sixty-six in number. This number does not include the wives of Jacob's sons. Counting the two sons of Joseph who were born to him in Egypt, all the people of the household of Jacob who were in Egypt numbered seventy. Jacob sent Judah before him to Joseph to accompany him to Goshen. So they came to the land of Goshen. 
Joseph harnessed his chariot and went up to meet his father Israel in Goshen. When he met him, he hugged his neck and wept on his neck for quite some time. Israel said to Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen your face, and know that you are still alive. Then Joseph said to his brothers and his father's household, I will go up and tell Pharaoh, My brothers and my father's household, who were in the land of Canaan, have come to me. The men are shepherds, they take care of livestock. They have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. Pharaoh will summon you and say, What is your occupation? Tell him, Your servants have taken care of cattle from our youth until now, both we and our fathers, so that you may live in the land of Goshen. For everyone who takes care of sheep is disgusting to the Egyptians. God, I love this passage when you come back to Jacob and reassure him that you have made a promise with him, a covenant with him that you'll make him a great nation and for him to go to Egypt and to see his son. And probably my favorite part is the future promise of bringing them back out of Egypt as well. And so we get to see a little bit uh, into Exodus when we get there of what happens there and, and the coming out of that remnant just gets really exciting to to see you promise things and fulfill them and promise things and fulfill them and God I just pray today for for everyone who has been let down which is all of us <laughs> we've all been disappointed or hurt by somebody in our life and there, it's not always somebody in our life who is outside of our family sometimes it's a family member and somebody who loves us very much who causes us great pain who breaks a promise who is devi devious who goes behind our back and does something who doesn't love us doesn't respect us so today I ask for grace and I I ask for mercy for people whose hearts are very heavy right now with those feelings and those emotions of trying to deal with somebody who has not kept their promise. You know, I think it's so awesome that you are our Father, that you are our Heavenly Father and you are a person who loves us beyond measure, who forgives us everything we do which is just baffling unto itself and who will be there for us no matter what we do. And yet we go into the real world and we're broken people dealing with broken people. And when that happens, there's going to be pain and there's going to be hurt and there's going to be anger and there's going to be frustration. So I pray for those hearts today, God. pray for them because I know that they are so hurt and so heavy and some of them are so swollen with grief that they think that they can never trust a single person again and I'm just asking that if that person is listening to your words today <sighs> that you will just make it very obvious and come into their life today and show them hope We've been listening to your words in, in Genesis so far and, and hearing your promises and, and watching you keep your covenants and, and being there for these people, these broken people who butt up against each other and deceive each other and lie to each other and sell each other out. Allow those people who are listening right now whose hearts are swollen with grief and sadness and frustration and betrayal to hold on to what you have promised us, that you are the one person in our entire world who will never ever break their promise, who will never ever hurt us, who will never ever deceive us, who will never ever betray us, who will love us no matter what we do. So God, as, as 
the people listening hear this and that they're healing and learning what it feels like to have their heart broken. Allow them to hold on to you. Allow them to have you as that rock in their life, that steady, consistent love that is never going away, that is always and forever, that just overflows your heart, pushes everything else out of the way, is so pure and so true. Allow them to hold on to you, God, as their rock in this, this very fast rushing stream of emotions that they're dealing with in the situation. Give them something that is constant and consistent and sure in their life. Allow them to look up and not down in despair, but to look up at you, God. God, I just ask for a smile to come to their face today. A smile that just radiates your love and your kindness and your forgiveness and your patience and most of all your grace and your mercy. Thank you for the smile that you've brought to my life. I love you very much. Amen. <laughs>